This video is going to show you how you can merge data sets in R. When I'm referring to merging data sets here, this is the type of thing I'm talking about. So you can see I've got two data sets here and I want them to stick them side by side. I'm not talking in here about having exactly the same variables in two different data sets and wanting them to put one above the other, so to speak, to make one longer data set. I'm talking about making wider data sets, adding new variables like this. I'm going to run through doing that in several different ways for different circumstances you might find yourself in. So I'll do it when you've got perfectly matching data sets, when we've got data sets with different numbers of variables, and when we've got to match them by different column titles or indeed more than one column title. So the first thing I'm going to do is just read in some data. If you haven't got the read Excel package, you'll need to install that, but we will need to pull that out of the library. And then I'm just going to read in these two data sets, all this data and codes available below the video. So I'm just going to call it DF1 and DF2. So here's DF1 read in and DF2. So this is DF1. We've got our identifier variables called PPT, standing for participant, 1 to 15. Then I've just got variable X, variable Y, and variable Z. And if you look at df2 again we've got the same identifier pbt 1 to 15 and then we've got variable 1 2 and 3 and i want to stick these two data sets together now there's lots of different ways that you can merge data in r there's not just one way of doing it but i like to use the merge command so i'm going to create a new data frame i'm going to call joined df okay and i use my use merge so I'm going to merge df1 and df2. And then I use this command by x, by y. This is telling it what columns to use to match these two data frames together. Now it's called PPT in both data sets. So we can just say by x and by y. X just refers to the first data frame. And y refers to the name of the second data frame. And then I can leave this all x and all y equals true. And I'll come on to that in just one moment. So that's all I need to do to merge this data. So if I run that, then I'll view my joined data frame. There we go. So participants there, PPT, and it drops one of them because that's what's matched it by. You don't need that twice. There we go. We've got variable X, Y, Z, and one, two, and three. And it's merged them so the rows correspond according to the participant. Now, of course, sometimes you may have data frames which have different identifier labels so for example let's look at a new data frame df3 so this one's called it p number instead of ppt they've called it p number so we've got 1 to 15 here and we've got variable 3 and 4 so this matches up which has got a different name so all we need to do in this circumstance is we're going to make our join df again we're going to merge it df1 and df3 and now x by x is ppt in df1, the identifier was ppt, and by y is now p number. So even though it's got a different title, we can still merge it together. So if you run that, there we go, it's merged it together. Again, it's only kept ppt because p number and ppt are essentially the same value, so it just keeps one of them for us. And there you go, it's nicely merged that. Sometimes, however, you're going to get different values in the columns that you wish which to match so what i mean by this let's have a look at yet another data frame so df4 let's run this now here we've got ppt variable x1 variable z1 now what we see here is this data frame doesn't have a participant number one so it's missing participant one so we don't have variables x1 and z1 for participant one and it's got an extra participant participant 16 so remember df1 was 1 to 15 this one is now 2 to 16 but we can still merge them however we need to tell r what to do about the extra participants and our missing participants from the data obviously there's lots of different combinations that we could think of maybe we only want completely complete cases join df merge command df1 df4 it's called PPT, our identifier in both, PPT. And I've said here, all X equals false, all Y equals false. So this is going to 
get rid of anybody who has any missing data in X and any missing data in data frame Y. So what this produces us for our joined here is this. So this is a complete case. If you've got missing data in X, so participant 16 doesn't appear in X, so it's removed, and participant one doesn't appear in Y, then it's been removed. So you can see we've got the two to 15 here, and everything's completely complete. So that's if we only want people who've got data in both those data frames. Now, obviously, there's lots of different combinations of this. For example, in this case here, so it's exactly the same command as before, but said all x equals true, all y equals false. This is going to keep all the x data. So even if you've got missing data in y, we're going to get everything in x. Just remember x being the first data frame in the list. So if I run that, we get participant one because they're in X, they're in DF1. And it just says, hey, we've got missing data here. Drop participant 16 because we haven't said we want to keep all complete data in. Now again, of course, we could do the opposite version of that. All X is false, all Y equals true. So if we run that version of it, we lose participant one, but we keep participant 16. And again, we get missing data in there for everything that was on X or the F1. So that's just the opposite of the last one. And then finally, our last combination that we can possibly have is we keep all the data. All X equals true, all Y equals true. So if you run that, we've got participant one with some missing data in there. And we've got participant 16 with some missing data in there. So we've got all the possible combinations that we can have there. It may be the case that you need to merge your data by more than one column. This is almost exactly the same as what we did before. So let's have a look at two new data frames here, DF5 and DF6. So DF5 here, we've got sample and participant. And then a variable called variable Z. So it's sample, so sample one, two, three, and four, and then the participant one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. So we've got repeated measures of this participant on the diff in different samples. Now let's look at DF6. Now you can see we've got participants again, we've got variable Y alive or dead, but you can see it's all in a completely different order. Participant 111, 222, 333, 444. Sample is 1234. So data's been done in a different way. And you know, it's perfectly possible that all this could be a complete mess. It could go 133412. You know, we don't know how neat our data sets are going to be. So this code will still work if things are a complete and it's a mess. What we need to do is sort it by two columns. So this is almost the same thing as before. We merge the F5 and the F6 by X, and here's the difference. Because we're merging by more than one thing, we create a list. So C is create the list, and in brackets we say things that we want to sort by sample, comma, participant. And then by Y, and again create the list, sample, participant, PPT. Again, these could have different titles, that would be absolutely fine. And again, we could have missing data in some or the other. So we could use our all X, all Y statements as well to match them up. But what we're doing here is syncing them up by two columns. So we set our list and then we merge them based on that list. Let's run that. So we can see we've got sample, PPT, participants, variable Z and variable Y. And it's reordered our variables in order to sync them up perfectly based on sample and participant. And you can keep, you know, you can sort by more things as well. It's, you just follow this same logic and it's quite straightforward to combine these large data sets 